You know, you think that in math, the easiest thing you can do is count, right? I see one thing, I see two things, I see three things. But it turns out that when the counting gets a little bit more intricate, it's much harder to do. Counting turns out to be really hard and actually is an entire area of mathematics called combinatorics. So in combinatorics, one tries to count things systematically. So the hard part about counting is that you want to make sure that you count all the options and you only count each option once. There's in lies the rub. So let's take a look at a variety of issues where counting naturally arises. And you'll see that, in fact, it's not as easy as it first appears. Let's start off by taking a look at something that goes on at Travis High School and maybe at high schools near you. So students at Travis High School can choose one uh, physical education elective, one fine arts elective, and one foreign language elective. And the question is, how many different schedule choices are there? So let's take a look at the different electives. So for phys physical education, there are two electives. There are individual sports and team sports. You can do one of each of these. You can pick one of these. Fine arts, you can pick one of these, art, music, drama. Foreign language, you can pick one of these, um, French, Spanish, French, sign language, or Japanese. So we're allowed to pick one from here, one from here, and one from here. And the question is, how many different ways are there picking? Well, we can do it in a variety of ways. Let's just sort of think about it just once together. We can start off by thinking about an individual sport, select that one, select art. Now with those two choices fixed, how many possible schedules are there now? Well now it's clear there are four because I could have this, this in Spanish, this, this in French, this, this in sign language, this, this in Japanese. Those are all different. So I've got four different ones for this set. Alternatively, I could have picked the individual sports and music. Well, then how many would I have? How many new options would I have? I'd have individual sports, music, and, well, there are four options. Spanish, French, sign language, Japanese. So there are another four that we can sort of toss on. So now we're up to eight possibilities. And then finally, what happens here with the team, with, um, with the individual sports and drama? Well, I could have individual sports, drama, and, well, there are four possibilities. I could have Spanish, French, sign language, Japanese. So there's going to be another four, and so now I see I'm up to 12. But I'm still not done because that was all assuming I was picking the individual sports. What if I pick the team sports instead? Well, then I got to start all the way over and say it's team sports and art, four possibilities. Team sports, team sports and music, four possibilities. Team sports and drama, four possibilities. So that gives me another 12, which gives me a total of 24. Wow. So it turns out there are a lot more schedules than we might have first thought. How can we find that systematically? Well, there's actually a really neat way of doing that called the fundamental counting principle. So the fundamental counting principle says that if I'm supposed to select one thing from, in this case, three piles of stuff, and there's so many in this pile, and so many in this pile, and so many in this pile, to know how many possible ways there are of picking one from each thing, I just take the number of things in this pile, multiplied by the number of things in this pile, multiplied by the number of things in this pile. So in this case, I would see 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 4. Let's compute that. If I take 2, because there's two things here, multiply that by 3, three things here, and multiply that by 4, what do I get? I get 2 times 3, which is 6, times 4 is 24, and that was the answer we knew was correct. So you can see an example where the fundamental counting principle actually works. So if you've got a bunch of things, and you've got so many items in each of those things, and you want to pick one item out of each, how many different ways are there of picking them? To count that question, you just take the product of the contents of each of the containers, and you've got it, and you've got it. Let's take a look at another example. So here we go. So a student ID consists of two digits, so that means two, like, you know, five and three, zero and one, followed by five letters. Now, so that we don't get confused with one and zero, we're going to actually remove the letters I and O, because they kind of look like, look like one and zero sometimes. So there's no I, no O possibilities. And each letter or number may be used more than once. So we could have one, one, A, A, so forth. The question is, how many different student ID codes are possible? So what's the deal? The deal is we're going to have two digits 
followed by five letters. So let's use the fundamental counting principle here. We have two digits followed by five letters. So what do I do? I can pick any one of how many digit possibilities are there. Well, zero through nine, so there's 10 possibilities. I take the total number of digits for the first digit, look at the, multiply that by the total number of possible digits for the second digit, which is also 10. And then I've got five letters. So what I do is I take the product of the number of possible digits times the number of possible digits, that's the two digits, and then I've got one, two, three, four, five letters, and so I take the number of possibilities for the first letter, second letter, third letter, fourth letter, and fifth letter. I'm allowed to repeat letters, so how many, how many letters and digits are there possible? Well, here we know there are 10, and there are 10 possible digits for the second choice. Now, what about the letters? Well, we know there are 26 letters in the alphabet, but don't forget, I and O are not allowed, so there's actually only 24 possibilities. And there's 24 possibilities for the next letter, 24 possibilities for the next letter, 24 possibilities for the next letter, and 24 possibilities for the last letter. So this actually works out to be 100 multiplied by 24 raised to the fifth power. Well, what does that equal? Well, of course, I can do that in my head. Can you do that in your head? I can do it. It's going to be... 796,262,400. Is that what you got? Well, that's correct. So look at that. There are a lot of different possible IDs. If a school actually used this system, you can see they're not going to have to worry about two students having the, the same idea. You can go for years and years and years and years and never actually start over with the, with the ideas because you have IDs, because you have oh, almost 800 million possibilities. Counting is tricky and we've got to be careful. The numbers get big pretty fast.